Hey, everyone. Welcome to Locked on Lakers for Wednesday. Brian Kamenetsky joined by special guest Fagan, that Harrison Fagan. I don't know who he is, but we're going to talk about Rob Palinka and whether or not he's completely rehabbed his image, not just in Lakerland, but league-wide. That's next. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Locked On Lakers your first listen of every day, Monday through Friday, sometimes on weekends if there's a news dump or a big game or something like that. Uh, always going to be free, though, no matter what day of the week. Never behind a paywall. Locked On Lakers on YouTube is where you can go to see the show, hang out with over 20,000 subscribers. Uh, people reacting to uh, the first couple shows of the week with Aaron Larsoul, and they will soon be reacting to what I can only describe as what's certainly going to be an even, an even better show with uh, Harrison Fagan, who you you all know him. He is, uh, I, I, I'm reading from your, I should have, this is like really bad podcast hosting. I should have asked you like, hey, <laughs> we were just talking about wasted time to, on podcasts. Like, what do you want me to like call you? Um, but you know, he's, he's with the, with SB nation, you're a manager. Yeah. I, I think, thinking... I think grand czar of SB nation NBA yeah. is probably like, I mean, that's the preferred term. They won't let me put it on my business cards, but I'm working on it. Still dabbles in silver screen and roll, which is where we get most of our material. And, um, just an all around mensch as the, uh, my people would say. So, um, how are you, man? How's your summer? I'm, you know, it, it, it's been good. I, I can't complain too much. The Lakers didn't, you know, firebomb their entire roster, you know, like they have in the any past. Of it. And they didn't firebomb any of it. Yeah, they, they just they, they ran it back, as as the great philosopher Sean McVay would say, you know. And so, yeah, it was it was a good summer. Like, didn't have any, you know, insane trades to react to or, you know, that came out of nowhere that we weren't expecting. Like, pretty much everything has been, you know, for me, uh, order and, you know, being able to kind of plan out my days is something that's important. And so the fact that almost every single thing they've done we've had a pre-write for has been nice uh, outside yep. of, like, the first 24 hours of free agency like we didn't right. we, we didn't have a Gabe Vincent pre-write ready but I, most no. of the other stuff we have yeah and it, you know for somebody like you who is a, a, a and I I say this with great respect and love understands the value of driving a joke into the ground <laughs> so deep that it comes out the other side and it's funny again yeah um, you have been just you know, destroying the run it back meme from Sean McVay. And so by Rob Palinka doing it this way, he has not only, um, I think, helped the Lakers, he has also helped you keep that meme going because it's very funny. And so, you know, anytime and you get to drop it, it's, it's, it's worth doing. It went from being a threat like it was at the beginning of last season to being <laughs> something that people wanted. And so that was sort of like that, that resuscit he resuscitated it mid season. All of a sudden it was no longer like he was pointing a gun at your head and he was like, run it back. He was, you know, I don't know what, I guess he, I guess he put the gun away and was chanting, run it back. Well, I forget which, which uh, Lakers Twitter guy, uh, which uh, does the, you know, like Lakers play today. And it was yeah. like, it was a threat for a long time. Yeah, no, that's a, yeah, Raj, uh, Raj Paul. Right. Um, yes, thank you. Yeah, I, was, I blanked yeah. out. Yeah, they, and, early on, those those tweets were a threat to our all of our collective mental health. It's like, oh no, the Lakers play today, and then it went on to being a good thing. And you know, again, ro that Rob Palinka image rehab we're going to discuss. Well, let's just let's just do that now. Well, if you're looking at the side rail, you're capable of flipping yourself around mentally to take the second bullet point and make it the first one. I think you'll be okay. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I, like many people had been skeptical of the work of Rob Polinka, um, particularly like when it comes to like the work on the margins, um, you know, the attention to detail of signing guys to the right length deal, all that kind of stuff, you know, that got Taylor Horton Tucker to free agency a year earlier, got Austin Reeves to free agency a year earlier than it, it should have. And all these, all these other little things that they've done, even going back to the Anthony Davis trade and some of the stuff that you hear about how, um, Rob might have not dotted every I and crossed every T and, and those types of things. And then there was the Russ trade, which was just a terrible idea. Um, and then like it all shifted. And yeah. so where are you on Rob now? Because the, the deadline was great. 
um, unquestionably a victory for the Lakers. The offseason, at worst, was rock solid. Where are you yeah. on Rob now? Yeah, you know, I, I think Rob, it's sort of the biggest, I guess, like compliment or plot it we can give him for this summer is he didn't continue his trend of either like assembling the worst team of all time that is going to make everyone, you know, like want to tear their, I mean, you, this is a bad analogy for you and I, but you know, everyone else who has hair, uh, want to tear their hair out or, you know, assemble like a championship contender last year. He sort of cheated. He did it mid season, but that was when they made the most of their moves. And he sort of, you know, again, going back to the 2018, 19 team that made LeBron, that LeBron described with a fart noise, uh, you know, the Michael Beasley, like Rajon Rondo, Lance Stevenson, weird year and then they assemble you know literally the title winner the next season uh and then the season after that they i mean i think a lot of us thought they got better they ended up getting injured while right. I, I i, I am not critical of him for what is that the 21 20 yeah 20 20 21 season. yeah i don't think running it back was really an option memes aside and that team was 21 and six before the wheels fell off. So yeah, no, that, that team was fine. So maybe my every other year analogy kind of falls apart there. We're, but then the next we're, summer, we're, we'll shoehorn it in there. Yeah, the, the next, that one doesn't count because it was so close to after the season. So he didn't have time to really think of ways he could screw it up. And he only just like got better. And he saved, uh, he saved, he's like, you know what? I'm going to make it twice as bad the next summer just to make up for it because I'm going to have time to plan. Uh, but, you know, the Russ team obviously was, ended up being terrible. I was, a, I was a Russ optimist coming in. I thought that there was a chance that it could work out. I thought that if there was ever any place where he was going to do things that allowed him to fit into winning basketball, it would be this like that Lakers infrastructure that he was coming were into. You so I can't... Were you genuinely opt? Because I, I will tell you this. I was look, I mean, we you, we do a daily show. It, the 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 highest rated, you know, most downloaded show, I still think it may be the highest download we've ever done was the day after the Rust trade. Um <laughs> the second highest, at least of that year, was the show we did like two days before that where the rumors started to percolate that Lakers might go after West. I remember this show. Them. You guys were like, right. hell no. This is a, such a, like, it was, it seemed like such a terrible idea. And so obviously yeah. stupid that we were like, we did a whole show. And I think we went long, like David Locke knocking on the door, like, Hey guys, you know, knock it off, wrap it up. Uh, <laughs> it was flashing the lights on and off. Uh, that, that did the second most traffic of the year. The, this is a terrible idea. So like once they did it, like you try to find the, the possibilities of how this could work. You know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, we're doomed every day for the next, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's Anthony's show. But, but so I wasn't, you can't, I was you not can't genuinely optimistic. Were you actually like... No, I genuinely was. I, I will. I will own this. I. Uh, I. You know, am one of the few people that is willing to admit that I was duped. You know, like I. I was not familiar with Russ's game. I owe everyone else an apology. Um, <laughs> Who is this Russell uh, Westbrook? Yeah. So I, you know, I was optimistic about that, but obviously in hindsight, that roster was horrible and was missing just any semblance of anyone who could do dirty work, which is sort of, or role player things, which is sort of why uh, part of the reason Austin Reeves was able to shine. And then later we found out that, no, he's just good at those things. And it wasn't just because he was having like his role player abilities compared to like Carmelo Anthony or extremely washed Avery Bradley. Like he was actually good. Um, and then, you know, they, and then last year they sort of, they kept their powder dry until the, until the trade deadline, they made their moves. And I think what all of it has sh sort of shown is that I think Rob is a guy that is pretty good at planning and pretty good at contingency type stuff and coming up with like different multi-team complicated weird trades that he can do like making contracts work and all that stuff i think he's good at those things i think he's less good either when put on the spot where we saw that he you know what regardless of who you think pushed hardest for that rust like you know thing i think he still bears some responsibility for it even if it was like lebron and ad going to him and saying we want this guy you know he still is the gm and it still should be him saying it's his job to say no, no. yeah right. exactly you're allowed to which he apparently maybe he wasn't allowed he wasn't he didn't oh, realize he at the time the idea. he liked it it's like he's yeah. a star bleeper like the rest of them yeah exactly and so but however much credit or blame or whatever you want to give him for that he sh that was like a situation where they had a trade lined up for a role player that kind of fit better and that was theoretically going to make them better but then you know at the last second they shifted course you know he was sort of uh, like up against you know up against the deadline and ran into trouble there where you 
you know, at the trade deadline, they basically had all sort of year to plan. Okay, here are the types of contracts we can go after. Let's keep talking with these teams about these various deals and what we can get for one pick. And we're going to be clear in our stance. And they waited it out and they got it done. And so I think that he is neither as bad of a GM as the Russ trade would make you believe or that first roster that he put together with Magic would make you believe, but he's also not probably as good as the amount of like credit he's getting now when people like the moves. It does feel like this is like a very up and down thing where it's like either Rob is the greatest GM of all time and he's outsmarting the entire league, or he is the worst GM of all time and has no qualifications for the role. Like I think what? that he is, yeah. I think he's a mediocre GM. I think that's what we've seen. Let's stick with that because I, I have a question to the point that you're making. There is something that, like, if you are a Rob skeptic, um, that I think is worth asking. And so we will do that next. Harrison, you're a football fan, aren't you? No, but <laughs> sorry. Yes, and Harrison. Yes, and. Yeah. Yes, I, lo I love football. Where Thank can I you. learn more? American football. Love it. It's about the season is about to kick off. Surely you were watching the Hall of Fame game then between the Jets and the and the Cleveland Browns over the weekend. Um, Wouldn't have missed a second of it. Yes, FanDuel is giving you the chance <laughs> to win all season long with the uh, with the NFL because right now, Harrison, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, that is the championship game, you get a bonus bet. You get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season as well. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl. Again, that's the championship game. And you get bonus bets for every victory. You can use your bonus bets on the spread, on player props, on over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Be like Harrison. Dive deep into the NFL. <laughs> so here's the theory that if you... If, if you are a, uh, a little wait and see on Palenka, part of the reason the Lakers were in a situation like, like at the deadline, they could have tried to swing something for Kyrie. I guess it was there at the deadline. They went a different direction to their credit. In the offseason, you could argue that the dumb option for Rob Palenka, which was a was to trade up LeBron Kyrie. to Dallas to team up with Kyrie, where he was very realistically being recruited. <laughs> Another, the, the 1A dumb option, <laughs> something <laughs> to get Kyrie here or some other superstar or like doing all the things that would have been required to blow up the roster to bring a third quote unquote max player, star player, whatever it is to the Lakers. It really wasn't there. The option wasn't there in That's any point. meaningful and realistic way. So if you're, if you're Rob skeptical or Rob wait and see, um, you would argue that you don't really know if Palenka has turned a corner, changed his style, come to Jesus, whatever it is, because he hasn't. Well, we been know prevented. we know he's come to Jesus. I think I think if there's one thing Rob will let you know up front, he he's definitely he's, done that part. He's come to Pablo Neruda, if nothing else. Yeah. Um, is it you? Is that you know? We haven't seen him have that sort of binary choice between A and B. Um. Yeah. Is that fair? Does that concern you as a as a Rob is mediocre guy? Ah, uh, it doesn't totally concern me. I, I think it's a good point, actually, and I hadn't really thought about it that way, that he sort of had the little plastic things inserted into the outlets so he couldn't go around shocking himself, you know? They're like, hey, no, it's uh, sorry. It's You only have these kind of mid-tier options available to you. You have to build a functional roster. You can't just go all in around kind of three stars. And, you know, I, I mean... It, I can't argue with that, that he didn't have the opportunity to screw up as badly this summer, or at least by all accounts. Like, it, it didn't seem like anyone was available that he would have been able to kind of screw things up for, whether in free agency or in a trade. The Lakers were just not really in a situation to acquire a star via either option this summer. And so, you know, we and don't really know fair, if his... They didn't, it doesn't even look like they even explored that option in any means. They didn't try, which is good. Yeah. 
No, yeah, you know, like two years ago, we would have heard like, oh, Lakers are seeing if they can get in on Dame. Like right now, they don't have the contracts that like match up. They would have to, I think AD would have to be a part of that package and po probably other salary filler. I forget how much Dame makes right now, but we haven't even heard anything like that. Of Like previously, we would have gotten like, oh, Lakers are, they're looking into Dame, you know, get excited fans, third star coming to LA. And so, you know, maybe, maybe he's learned his lesson from all of this. I do think that, you know, you'd have to be, to, to be fair to Rob, and maybe this is being too fair, but you'd have to be pretty stupid to have not learned the lesson from the Russ experience, you know? And so if he's still like, give me three stars, we'll figure out the depth later after that, and it's not three incredibly well-fitting stars, you know, at the very least, which, you know, the three-star build can be good. I think under this new cap, it's almost impossible for it to be good, but it can be. And, you know, but he hasn't, it, just because he hasn't had the option to sort of acquire that yet, you know, maybe we can't fully judge him, but I think it would be, he's certainly not going to go after someone that fits as terribly with LeBron and probably AD as well uh, as, you know, Russ was. I, I, I think your point there is really smart. Like you have to learn, you have to see the, the value of it and learn that you just, you know, that minimum contract thing, look, Phoenix is going to try. And I think they yeah. did as well as you can do with the minimum guys and, and all that, and they're they're. And Phoenix th has three stars that fit really well together. They seem you know? like they do, like yeah. Beal, and then you know they still have Aiton as a as a chip that they can use either in that group where he still could be pretty productive, or as a as a potential trade chip or something like that. But we're yeah, gonna find out. Best you know, player probably in Frank Vogel's mind. He's like, this is this is we're gonna they're gonna build in some Aiton post ups, you know, early on in the season. They'll do something, you know, like how much you know key debates Jop can you can you handle? Yeah. Um, I, so it's like they did a good job of that, but like you are depth challenged and, you know, Denver showed like this stuff really matters in addition to your stars. I, I, I feel like he's a guy, you know, he, he likes both the success and I've never questioned like he's never been one of these like Lakers conspiracy theorists who's like they're trying to drive the team into the ground to do, you know, like yeah, those people yeah. were out there. Um, they want to win. He's trying to win. But, but I also feel like he likes he wants to be seen as the smart guy. And so when you do the crazy thing that looks like the bold swing and whatever, you want it to be able to work out so you can say, this is what we told you was going to happen. And, you know, we ran their numbers on the, on the, the wing and on his catch and shoots, he's, you know, 46% here. So while the numbers overall don't look good, you know, we believe that the shooting, like all the stuff that like he would, you know, before the Russ season, we're like, hey, Rob, is there enough shooting on this roster? And he's like, absolutely. Um, we have I, thrust, guys. Thrust is what matters here. You yes. know, <laughs> I love the thrust. new shooting. I really do love thrust. Um, that was that actually thrust, I think, is what gave birth to this um, in part. We got a lot of mileage out of thrust. And let me pull it up. I know you're not supposed to stop the show for this sort of thing. Oh, uh, I'll keep looking. Um, but anyway, I, I was I was going to say, you know, to your point of Rob sort of caring about he's perceived, I've always sort of felt like that's probably one of his most effective abilities in terms of painting perception of himself. And, you know, like he say whatever you will about the guy and his basketball abilities, you know, all that he might be the greatest upward manager that we've ever seen in human history, or at least one of them. Like how many GMs with Rob Palinka's resume after the rust trade are going to successfully able to be able to argue to their owner that it's like, Hey, this is not my fault. You should side with me, Rob Palinka. Versus yes. Anthony Davis and LeBron. You this know? is a this is, but it's a perfect encapsulation of how the Lakers operate. In this case, it turned out okay. Um, yeah. But Rob, he would only been the GM with this team anyway, and you know Magic left. You know, so he was sort of the one that was remaining and supporting the franchise and supporting the team and all that. So, like, he got major loyalty points from Genie. Um, it, I. I feel like, you know, the next couple summers, and it's the scene from Perfect where John Travolta is thrusting his pelvis forward and backward and forward <laughs> and backward um, in an aerobics class. And I don't know why it's no longer in our in our rail. And Andy, I think, has screwed up and he has things to answer for when he comes back. So I, I think, honestly, you should make him come back from vacation. Early. This is the type of error early. that yeah. um, I 
if you, I, I feel like the next couple seasons are going to be the ones that really test him. He's like, you know, the, the Anthony Davis thing was the easiest thing that he ever had to do. Assembling the Anthony Davis roster, you and I could have made that trade. You call David Griffin, you say, we would like Anthony Davis. He gives you a list of things he wants. Uh, you say, uh, how about these things? And he says no. And you keep say, adding things to the things that he'll want until he says yes. That was yeah. basically the Anthony Davis. Yeah, until trade. they drew the final line in the sand at Kuzma. It's like, no, right. under no circumstances will we include this guy. Because okay? one day, anything else need, you want, we might need <laughs> Russell Westbrook one day. So we have to yeah. hold on to, to Kuz. Yeah, the prophecy. That was why he held on to him. I mean, so it's like, well, I guess we'll find out next this offseason next offseason when when he he reforms the team post lebron what that looks like how how the team handles that i mean they are relatively well set up for the next couple of years in terms of a core group of players that they can run with i am i i've never i'm maybe not quite all the way there with the you know rob Polinka is you know the greatest gm there are a lot of it very enthusiastic lakers fans um but I do think, like, if the Lakers are good this year, he's going to have a very legitimate case for uh, executive of the year. Um, I Which think he has he, no chance to win. Well, that's the next question I wanted to ask you because <laughs> he was so widely and has been so widely despised by his peers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who I believe are the people who vote on this thing. I'm wondering if they, they are. Yes. It's yeah. the only award that's voted on by the people who are theoretically eligible for the award. And right. so, you know, it's why I, every single time somebody talks about Rob Polinka's off season, or is he going to have like an, I'm, I'm just like, again, reminder, this is the only award voted on by other executives. He will never win it. He so, could. Okay. So we don't even need to come back to this after the break. The answer is no. Yeah, I mean, he could he could invent a time machine and go back and get prime Michael Jordan and sign him to the veterans minimum. And I'm pretty sure the execs would find a way to give it to like Sam Presti. No. Oh, OK, well, then I guess it's it's uh, it's not something we need to talk about. But <laughs> like, I I am as optimistic about Rob Palenka as I've ever been. Because he's sort of doing the job and he's clearly feeling himself right now. And I don't blame him. He's had a good, good, good run here. But he's doing it in a way where he's sort of not out front and he's also not he's doing it without much to my disappointment, without poetry, without Shakespeare. He really, he does, somebody he's told not him bringing that, literature we, to that we were all making fun anymore. of him for the book thing, because it's been very disappointing. He no longer starts with like a long analogy or like mm -hmm. how this relates to a book he read recently or anything like somebody. The trolley told him story. To you remember the trolley story? Yes. Oh, we, like we have like that. an SSR ranking of the best Palenka analogies, you know, and that is on there. That was what prompted us to make the list. The he also compares the that. young Lakers to he's like he, he started the sentence. It was something like it's like if you go back and you watch videos of Taylor Swift when she was 16. Uh, that was Rob Palenka <laughs> on like Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, Kyle Kuzma. Yeah. I mean, so it's but it's good for him that he doesn't do those things anymore. It's just bad for us. But yeah, it's bad for us as the, content creators. You know, right, it's, it's just yeah, it's a, it's smarter on his part, and it again speaks to the like I need to appear smart for my bosses and for the perception of me. All right. So uh, with that settled, we'll, we I, maybe a couple more things with this Palenka deal, um, but we do have to get to Anthony Davis and snacks. Um, I, this was very, in some ways, kind of revealing, I think, um, how Anthony Davis answered a question about his five favorite snacks of all time. We will get to that next. All right, so Harrison, uh, Anthony Davis, I saw this circulating around Twitter. Maybe we'll get back to, oh, I'm sorry, around X. Um, this morning so is that how we it, every time we reference it we got to do the x yes i'm pretty sure didn't he didn't elon tweet about that or x about that like what are we yeah. calling re x's like <laughs> he, 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 he zeded it he zeded he zeded it you know it's like sending zeets <laughs> Zeets? It's yeah that's what no that's what they were calling it in their like official columns yeah how do you spell that x e e t okay <laughs> I think any time you can rename something personally that like, you know, is widely known under its current name and like has inspired verbs that, it, you know, extend beyond it. Like you got to do that, you know, which is why I'm proposing that you guys rename your show, you know, just like locked on Cambros and you just like expand out of the Lakers sphere, yeah. you know, it just becomes it's, it's less less a show about the Lakers and more a show about what people want, which is just us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, 
a half hour a day of us and like things yeah, that are I, about I read us your iTunes reviews. Interested. It's just all people saying Brian and Andy do not talk about their personal lives enough. It's like 29 right. minutes of Lakers <laughs> talk. And then occasionally we get like a little personal anecdote and it's very yeah, disappointing. It's not enough. Uh, we need a spinoff show. Um, but anyway, <laughs> this morning on, um, I think they should just rename the platform crypto.com arena and see if anybody calls it that. <laughs> <laughs> So they probably get about as much uptake. Um, Anthony Davis, some clip, I don't know if it's recent, just happened, or it's old, but it's a it's a clip of him talking about his five all-time favorite snacks, snack foods, and he actually expanded that to include drinks. I'm going to give you the list, and I want you to tell me what stands out about this. Yeah, I, I was not aware of this until you okay. mentioned it, and so I'm oh, good. Ready. So this yeah. is fresh. This is not even, yeah. it's not even a bit. This is, this is being thrown at you live number five vintner's hot crunchy curls chips this is uh as he quote calls it quote a chicago thing so it's a local i guess chicago chip yeah i was gonna say i have no idea if that exists Never or, heard not, of it. or if he's just messing with the interviewer so yeah no i think i'm sure it's a thing they showed a picture yeah i was not you know quite frankly invested enough in the process to download these pictures myself but <laughs> trust me, you can find the clip and it's there number four cosmic brownies from little debbie these are fudgy brownies with rainbow sprinkles i've never had them i am aware of the little no debbie those are company. good i those were a go-to for me when i was okay when so I was you know the cosmic I, yeah brownies. those are good when i went to college cosmic brownies were something different <laughs> oh <laughs> i'm only partially kidding um number three little debbie honey buns which he recommends you microwave for 10 seconds, no more, no less. I never really liked those, but, you know, hey, uh, to each his own. We, we can't all have the same taste buds. Right, number and, two. Does he have a little Debbie sponsorship? Why is he? Well, that's one thing we can talk about. Number two, Calypso teas or, or you know, or, or Arizona teas, one of those two. Number one, the Little Debbie oatmeal cream pie. So three of the five things, as you note, are Little Debbie. <laughs> Did he? What? He must have gotten like a lifetime box of them as a rookie or something. Like he 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 zeded something nice about them, and they sent him like whatever the <laughs> well, little Debbie version is of like the Chipotle black card. Zeded. Yeah. I like you're really working on that. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I'm not going to use it in everyday life. We just we just riffed <laughs> on it, you know. <laughs> um. So, so the first thing that sticks out to you is the fact that it's like three of five or little Debbie. Yes. And to our knowledge, he is not sponsored by Little Debbie. Not, no, I, I feel like I would know this, given the amount of emails I get every time yeah. any Laker gets a sponsorship. Like, I, I think I would know if he was like, see, if they, if, they give, <laughs> if they give my guy AD more of his favorite snacks, you know, to bulk up for playing center. <laughs> what stuck out to me is the fact that the man has snack chips with his face on them. Yeah. And did not include them on his list. I did an entire interview with him about these freaking chips, and then he he was telling me how great they were, that I was going to like them more than Jason Tatum's flavor, which I never tried. So, I mean, I did like them I more mean, because Celtic. I didn't what try is, the other yeah, one. Come on. Yeah, exactly. I, I figured they taste like garbage, so I wasn't going to try them. Sorry, Ruffles. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, like, yeah, this is why this is why he's never going to equal LeBron in wealth is like for LeBron, this would have been no question. Like I am immediately, you know, naming what well, I, I know in my supercomputer brain, which mm -hmm. snacks and things I am sponsored by, or I'm going to name something generic. An example of this, I just read, I, I don't know if you watched the video LeBron just did for PlayStation where uh, he was answering that, yeah. a bunch of questions for them. And they asked him what his favorite snack was. And he said, grapes, which I was like, that's the most LeBron thing ever because he's just like, I, uh, I got to say that I'm eating healthy, you know, when I'm getting, and he probably does. I mean, he, given how he looks and how long he's been able to be effective, it's just, he's like, he eats the grapes and he's like, ah, this is just like wine. Last thing for you before we let you go, um, where, where do you have, a, we'll, we'll get to, we'll do the first bullet point now in like a minute and a half. <laughs> There's somebody See? who's been waiting here since the beginning, like, finally, <laughs> I knew they'd get to it. Where, where, really, you got to rank the teams in the West now. You know, where are the Lakers? Like, in terms of season ending standings? Sure. Or, no, I would say in likelihood of winning a championship because standings are different because the Lakers yeah, yeah. are going to put the pedal to the metal. The, you know, who yeah. knows? What the, but, like, let's say teams are relatively healthy at the end of the season. Who's good? Who are, you know, or, or answer it however you will. But I'm thinking likelihood of winning a title. Yeah, I mean, 
I don't know. Like, it's hard for me to put them anywhere below, like, third. Because I think you have to give the Denver Nuggets the best odds, obviously, just out of doubt. Like, they, they did get worse, but did they get worse enough that it's going to matter? And, you, you know, who knows if their young guys will kind of pop and maybe make up for right. some of the Bruce Brown absence. They 75%, probably, they, 85 You can replace Yeah, they Green. almost <laughs> assuredly got worse, but how much worse is sort right. of a exactly. question. It could be And just there was a, a pretty big gap degrees. between them and everybody else anyway. Exactly. Yeah. And so, but then after them, you know, like you're just looking at the teams in the West and, you know, maybe you can make an argument for one of these teams being ahead of the Lakers. Like, you know, but it's hard to argue for more than that based on all the question marks about basically all of the others. I kind of agree with you. Yeah. And, you know, again, like, and I say that as someone who thinks the Lakers will finish fifth or sixth in the standings because they just are not going to go all out all season. Right. Well, and Anthony Davis is, you know, is going to miss 20 games and LeBron's going to miss 20 games. And they're, they're not going to, tr- they don't care. They, cl- they just demonstrated. I mean, I, they, we just they, found they out why he's going to miss 20 games. It's because he's eating nothing but little Debbie snack cakes <laughs> and, you know, and, Washing and Arizona, Arizona iced tea. He apparently, <laughs> AD has the worst diet of any NBA player ever. I think they will, they will work hard to not be in the play in this year. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's why I've been avoid. saying like five or six. I think they're going to make sure that they get clear out of the play-in, but I don't know how much further they're going to push beyond that. So I kind of agree with you. I mean, Phoenix in theory is better. Yeah. In theory. Um, I'm waiting. I, I, I know I said like if everybody's healthy, but I just don't believe that'll ever happen with the Clippers. I don't know what Memphis is anymore and like what they look like when Ja comes back. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I saw, I was looking at the you future. Could, uh, the other one sort of in that conversation to me is the Warriors. Like, I think that yeah. just vibes wise, well, they just added Chris Paul. So I don't know if I could talk. Usually year one, Chris Paul, though, is, you know, you have good vibes on the it's, team. I, I'm not worried. I'm, not, I'm less worried about vibes and more worried about like, how do they do that? Like, you, yeah, they, I don't are know. Are they really going to try to play those guys together with Clay at the three? Like, I just don't, yeah. I don't see how this works. So I, I have questions there. And I mean, Sacramento is at at, fi- at plus five thousand at, at FanDuel Sportsbook, um, our official sportsbook partner, and I was like, "That's not a bad bet." Like, th- every- nobody's talking about them. They didn't get any worse this off season. Maybe I think betting on the Kings to win a championship is objectively a bad bet. Have you seen the last? You know, what are we? Seventy five years, seventy six years of NBA okay, history fine. now. Okay, but there's that, and then I think you know the the other one that I thought was like not totally into like. Oklahoma City at a, uh, plus 8,500, 85 to one. I, I might throw 10 bucks on that, but there, it is so hard to sort. Oklahoma through. City has at least made the finals. And like, I like, I, I don't want to base it all off of history, but um, yeah, I mean, right. they, they have that, a good that young team, team is they totally relevant to this season. Yeah. But like, yeah. I, to your point, and we can quit here, I just feel like you're right. Like, it is so hard to sort through the next six teams. Yeah, um, there's so many questions about basically everyone in the West this year. Like, are the Kings going to... Because you could credibly make the argument for the Kings as, like, a title contender, I guess. Like, I wouldn't make it, but you could credibly make the argument. But you could also say, hey, they got they were the healthiest team in the league last year. They're due for a drop-off. You know, uh, everyone is going to see it. Nobody, They're not going to catch anyone by surprise this year. Mm-hmm. You know, and maybe, maybe the vibes and the chemistry aren't as good this year after they sort of came up short. The, what happens the first game where, you know, Sabonis gets targeted a bunch in the pick and roll and everybody's like rolling their eyes like oh god not this again you know it's you you could make an argument either direction they they overachieved last year certainly do you uh, well i i think though we'll get the western conference this year that we didn't get last year like last year like i made the joke with uh aaron that like it was as if aaron uh uh adam silver was on the phone being like look everybody's got to chill out until the lakers can get their bleep together because <laughs> We're not doing this again. Yeah. So you guys all slow down and make sure they can get in the play in and we got to do what we got to do. Um, this year, I expect. It's like, you Dallas, know, you got to make your vibe so bad that you fall all the way from six to nine, you right. know, and the, to the point where you have to intentionally tank your way out of the season. But Dallas could be OK, I guess. You know, they have had a good off season, if nothing else. And Oklahoma City should be better. Yeah, they'll and be better. Guys back. And, you know, the Utah should be perfectly competent, if nothing else. And, you know, the, the bad teams are still pretty good. Like Houston will be better. You know, San Antonio will be a little bit better. I think the three teams at the bottom are still going to be at the bottom, but they'll all probably be better. Well, yeah. not the Blazers, but <laughs> it should be fun. So, yeah. all right. Uh, you can find him on uh, just all over the uh, the SB Nation 
basketball blogs. He's got his fingerprints everywhere, but you can still find him with uh, the, the silver screen and roll folks doing these again, pulling the strings, making things happen, telling people what to do as the czar of, um, of, of, of the whole operation that they yeah. have over there. Yeah, you can honestly upgrade me to Czar of SB Nation if you want to. I don't I don't think anyone's claimed that title, so I think that's mine if I want. And nobody's to. really paying attention over there to tell you you can't be that. So, um, you know, it's true. I don't think like if I start printing it on a business card, I don't think anyone's going to notice. I don't go into any office. So they're only going to find out if they see like if I hand, someone I handed this to is right. like, I'm trying to reach Harrison, the Czar of SB Nation, and they're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> Quite frankly, nobody uses those anyway anymore. So I could be I, I could be like the Kurt Rambis of SB Nation and just like not really have the title for it, but just like sort of coo my way into a suspicious but also unmeasurable amount of power. That would you make know? Mia your Linda, which I actually <laughs> I find this possibility to be intriguing. I need to get her to be really good friends with someone higher up at SB Nation, I think. I think I mean she's very friendly. Yeah, no, she's she, yeah, who doesn't pleasant like enough. She, I mean, <laughs> pleasant enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, good luck on your uh, marriage, and we'll see how things go forward. Tomorrow's uh, our anniversary, season. so you know oh, I'm I'm in, I'm in prime form. Hopefully, Thank she you. doesn't see the show between now and then. <laughs> um, it's okay. Like she doesn't watch or gonna... read anything I do, so we're good. <laughs> My wife is. I I think I've been doing this for. I don't know, getting like getting close to 20 years. She, I don't think she's seen more than like three times that I've done television. She's never listened to a show, uh, which is probably for the best. Um, Locked on Lakers on YouTube. She hates my job. Locked on Lakers on YouTube. <laughs> Hated it more when I had to go to games. Locked on Lakers on YouTube is uh, where you can go to see the show, hang out with over 20,000 subscribers. Um, we appreciate Harrison's time. We'll keep lining up guests for you through the week until Andy comes back next week. Uh, everybody have a great evening and we'll see you on wednesday thursday thursday yeah thursday